Court. I went down to Parliament yesterday and watched the Prime Minister designate um, Chris Hipkins and his deputy designate Carmel Cepoloni hold their press, first press conference. And already this morning with Bryce Edwards and Chris Trotter, some fascinating perspectives. I think we can now safely speculate that this was not something that happened amazingly over the last 48 hours. I think Jacinda Ardern had told Chris Hipkins before Christmas. I think Hipkins, Grant Robertson and maybe some other close advisors sat down and gamed this all out. Uh, you do not have a transition of power that seamlessly easy without some work having been done. But that is largely behind, beside the point. The question now is, and, and man, we got a signal yesterday, and none too subtle from Chris Hipkins, that the days of intersectionality, identitarian politics, are in a perceptive sense at least uh, over for now. And that the treaty and two separate governments and Maori not ceding sovereignty and critical race theory is going to be abandoned or certainly not highlighted by a Hipkins-led administration. And that is probably going to mean some radical rethink or maybe even the withdrawal, the legislation is passed, of the controversial three, I say five, Waters legislation, the end of the Radio New Zealand television merger and a return to the basics of the Labour Party, to the blue collar, to the working class, to the cloth cap. Will that be enough to save them? Um, who knows? Uh, but also, this means a kick where it hits for the Māori caucus. And I guess maybe some growing support for the Māori party. But the Māori caucus have been not overlooked... They've been given lip service. Their mana has diminished in this reshuffle, and largely because the Deputy Prime Minister is going to be Carmel Cepoloni. Uh, and Carmel Cepoloni, her appointment much vaunted, the first uh, Pacifica person to be uh, Deputy Prime Minister in this country, and a massive thing for the Pacifica community and the Pacifica voting bloc, bloc and that's what this is all about. But one person I was surprised to read online yesterday who was climbing into Carmel Cepoloni uh, was my mate Martin Bomber Bradbury. Why? He joins us now. G'day, Martin. Comrade, good morning to you. How you doing? So, uh, I'm, I'm good. What has Carmel Cepoloni ever done to you? Um, I think Carmel Cepoloni is without question one of the worst ministers of this government. I think from a purely Labour perspective, from a purely left-wing perspective, her time at MSD has been atrocious. Uh, here is a politician who should have done so much progressive work in that ministry and yet hasn't. And I think there are two glaring examples where she has failed the left. Uh, the first is in her total refusal to adopt any of the wealthy expert advisory groups, 42 recommendations to reform welfare, hasn't done any of them, has partially, partially started 22 of them, but hasn't actually completed any of them. And of course, the whole issue over removing the Children's Commissioner oversight over Aranga Tamariki, particularly in a year where the royal inquiry into historic abuse of children in the state care has been running and it has been clear about the level of torture and abuse that children were being forced to uh, endure under state care. In that year when we're learning all about that, she removes one of the most important independent and well-researched oversights into children being abused, being the Children's Commissioner. She has instead moved that role of monitoring children into a six-person faceless bureaucratic panel inside the Education Review Office. With all due respect to the Education Review Office, they didn't notice that teachers were sexually abusing children and students at Dilworth for 30 years. I have very little faith... Yeah, she hasn't been the minister for 30 system. years, Bomber. Pardon? She, ha she wasn't the minister back then. Oh, no, 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 she, no, 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 she, 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 she wasn't, she wasn't, but by putting such an important 
check and balance over the safety of children into the Education Review Office, I think, is, 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 is incredibly counterproductive. All right, so you think she is a bad choice as Deputy Prime Minister? I think she is a terrible choice if you're looking at it from a progressive point of view. It feels much more like a diversity box-ticking process. She's brown, yep. she's a woman, she comes from Auckland. That is the reason. Oh, I think it. she's there because she's a Pacific Islander and they have, and I think the message is clear, Bomber. Um, oh, well, we're going to piece some Maori off. We'll just get more Pacifica people out to vote by making one of them the oh, Deputy Prime I, Minister. I mean, I, 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 think, I think that Kerry Allen should have been the Deputy. Uh, I think that there was... Uh, I mean, look, the Māori caucus is only as good as Willie Jackson. And, of course, over the weekend... <laughs> Over, that's, that's true. Without him, they become all gutless little wimps. Yeah, yeah. And they just got pushed into a decision. Are you going to call Nanaima uh, a gutless I don't little know wimp? This is widely, I, don't, I don't know if this is widely known yet, but Willie Jackson, of course, taken to hospital over the weekend with complications uh, due to COVID. Oh, uh, dear. He's okay now. But because he suddenly had to leave... Uh, because he was so ill, um, uh, I, I, I think you've ended up with a very confused decision. Because, look, I, and we've just been talking, you know, I've talked to Bryce this morning, talked to Chris this morning, Bomber. This is, and I went to that press conference yesterday. Yes. Uh, I mean, yes. Trotter even suggesting that they won't just repudiate Maori wonderfulness, they will actually say, let's have a debate about what our democracy looks like and the role the treaty plays in it. That they might outflank David Seymour on the right on treaty issues and actually get, and is, and, 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 and actually and I, get Luxon to do something and get off his ass. Yes, look, I, 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 I think that what you saw in that press conference and, and, and Chippy's commentary afterwards is the issue that many people have been criticising Labour for, and that is not actually having the debate. You can't make fundamental changes about the direction of your country without mentioning it in your manifesto and not actually discussing it and bringing the people of Aotearoa, New Zealand, however you want to call it. Uh, he you. calls it New Zealand. I think, I think, I think, he calls it New Zealand, I, Bomber. And, 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 and he didn't mention Aotearoa once, did he? No. Um, I, I think that what sh I think where Chris Hipkins comes from is a place of where well, you've got to have the debate. And because they have not had that debate, because they've been frightened of the debate, you've allowed things like, like Three Waters, which is ultimately, let's be honest, about bloody drains. It's about drains and yeah. drainage. How on earth that has been allowed to become an existential race issue in New Zealand is beyond me. And this is what happens. If the government does not actually front foot the debate, there is a void that's created and you've got the right coming and making all sorts of allegations and claims because you're not prepared to start the debate. So I think what we'll, what we'll see from Chippy is someone who's actually prepared and intellectually capable of arguing his point of view. All right. This is going to, and when Willie, and I, just a message to Willie, I, I hope you're doing okay, mate. Um, when yeah. Willie gets back from hospital or, or recovers from the COVID um, or his complications, there's going to be a revolt in the Maori caucus, man. Um, I think that there is going to be a, um, well, I, I think there is going to be a solidifying behind the leader and getting through, because let's also remind, I mean, that caucus, that Māori caucus, over the last five years has been able to get $3.5 billion in extra funding for Māori organisations. That, 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 that group have been very good at ensuring flax roots, community groups, uh, Māori providers have finally started seeing their share of um, the social welfare spend. And they're not just going to kick their toys out and go, oh, well, that's, that's, that's it, we're off now. Um, I mean, the treaty, the, tr the Waitangi Tribunal is only being able to put out 1.9 million billion in reparations. Willie, Willie and the Māori caucus have almost been able to double that in half a decade. Um, I think that they are very focused on winning this election. They know what's at stake. A National Act government would completely rewind everything that they've you done. You know what? I don't think they would. I don't think they would. Oh, well, <laughs> well it's weird. Oh, I, I think David Seymour very much wants to. Yeah, yeah, but he's not going to leave that. Government. I think David Seymour's very wide-eyed and a believer 
Uh, and, and I don't think National is going to have any choice if they, if, they, if they want government. They're going to have to rely on him. But, but I, think, I think we're going to finally have the debate. And I think that way Sippy is going to be able to put it. Mm. And I think the Māori caucus knows that they, have to, that, that, that they can't cause those sorts of ructions. But they've they got to, to suck it up. All right, that's it. That's no, they've got no choice. They've got no choice. They've got no yeah. choice. That's politics. Yeah. Okay, if he's demulrifying, detreatising uh, the Labour agenda, Chris Hipkins, is he also, um, is he also getting rid of, of the woke? Are we looking at a bloke, not a woke, um, when it all comes oh, down to it? Look, I, 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 I think that even the most wokest drama queen on Twitter would acknowledge now that the extremes of that woke purging, the cancel culture, the middle class values, the virtue signaling, I think they would all agree that it's caused more damage and alienated more Well, you should b- try reading, you should try away. reading the woke columnists in our mainstream media and people like Jenna Lynch and Alison Moore who are still oh, it's, clutching it's, at their pearls. Oh, 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 oh. But you're right, and I've been amazed at how none of these very woke journalists who have all been clamouring to applaud Carmel for being the first Pacific Islander to have this role, not one, not one of them have pointed out the abuse that Carmel put through her, her ministry by refusing to do any of the, the welfare uh, advisory recommendations and by removing the Children's Commissioner providing oversight. Not one of them. If, if it had been a national party who had done those yeah. two things, that would be leading those stories. But because it's Carmel, because it's identity politics, because they can only see things through an identity politics lens, none of the stuff, none of the stuff she did, the bad stuff she did as a minister... From a, perspective, from a progressive perspective, is even mentioned because, yeah. because they don't see it. And, and the, the feminist like extremist at stuff and elsewhere also stuck in this narrative that Jacinda Ardern was hounded by, from office by nasty misogynists. Well, no, no, no. I, I, think, I think there is an absolute legitimacy to well, Even though she said that was not a factor. That's the one thing she's ruled oh, out, of Martin. Course, of course, of course she said that because you never do, do you? Because that you suck it up. You don't. You don't point that. But I. I no, I, males I do that. You. Women are more emotional I, and honest with their feelings, aren't they? Well, you know, not not all not all not all males, but not all females. Um, I think I think that when you are receiving people who are taking an enormous amount of time to plot out how they intend to hurt your child because of your position on, 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 on vaccinations. Yeah. I think that when you've got that level nuttiness, and you've seen that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. When, 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 when you've got that kind of corrosive energy in our political debate, um, I think it takes a toll. And, and, and we need to remind ourselves we want debate. We don't want abuse. We don't want free. Yeah, yeah, but come Having on, this debate, was, an, and she was, was a prime minister that... that presided over administration that cancelled people, that didn't talk to people, that took journalists like well, me, middle-of-the-road journalists oh, no, no, like no, me, no, 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 and no, made no, us pariahs. They, they have been as guilty of this, um, uh, of this dynamic as the right have, right? Every, everyone yeah. got defensive. Everyone pulled up their moats. Uh, everyone talks only in an echo chamber. That's why places like the platform are so important. That's why places where debate can occur is desperately needed the election. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking too, and, and I'm going to raise this and talk back later, Chris Hipkins can change. Um, the Labor Party can change its leadership. It might even genuinely be changing a lot of its less popular policies. But if that is being presented through the lens of a media which has been corrupted and does has bought or drunk the Kool-Aid of, you know, two separate systems of government and all men are rapists, how can the public of New Zealand have any faith in what they hear or is reported to them about, about this election year? Well, I think, I think that, that, that voters are already making those decisions and walking with their uh, uh, time and their money. I mean, my understanding is that stuff has had quite a drop in revenue, has had quite a drop in people wanting to be uh, promoting it uh, and supporting it financially. Their readership levels are down. I think that those sorts of 
machinations are already occurring within the media industry as people go, you know what, I'm not an idiot. I'll go, I'll go listen to a place where I can hear both sides of the argument and make my own decision. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that more woke dynamic is just dying off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Martin. Now, Martin, the other it. thing, the other really thing you've forgotten it. in your your somewhat vitriolic criticism of Carmel Cipollone is that her husband received a seventy five thousand dollar grant from Creative New Zealand to cut off his dreadlocks and tour the country, explaining why he made it into a Fijian hat. Oh, I'm in the wrong business. I really am. Seventy five grand. See, I could have done that. Um, I, I, the other no, thing, apart from the fact you don't have dreadlocks. In fact, the whole hair thing, you're a little bit challenged. <laughs> you know, my 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 bigger concern is. I mean, look, look, just just to give you an idea of how bad I think uh, Carmel is. Um, remember at the beginning of the year and and uh, Christopher Luxon came out and said, we're going to be really hard on these teenagers on welfare who have got disabilities and we'll, we'll give them a manager and if they don't you know, get off yeah. welfare, we'll cut them off. He did that routine. And of course, the left gasped and said, this is terrible and I was one of them and I, you know, these, these people don't need this kind of draconian stick. They need more carrot and we made the argument about that. And then it turned out a couple of days after that that well, we couldn't really get on our high horse over national wanting to do that because while Carmel Zeppeloni was minister, uh, 4,000 teenagers with disabilities were kicked off in those punitive runs. Yeah. So, so, so it's, it's, it's in, in, in terms of a left winger uh, idea on welfare, she has been an absolute failure. All right. Well, maybe this isn't a left wing Labour government anymore. Well, you know, we live in hope, mate. We live in hope. All right. Look, the other thing I'd say is, and once again, it comes back to this silly misogyny story. I see all the same suspects out. TVNZ runs Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Project. Dr. Suze Wilson, who we once had a run in here on the platform from Massey University screaming about um, misogyny, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if the news media keep publishing this crap, which people are obviously sick and tired of, how do we move forward? A and I come back to this. It seems to me that Labor is moving on, whether or not the sort of woke elite move on as well and let go their grip on power, and I guess it's the same question I'm asking of the Maori caucus, uh, does anything perceptively change? Well, I mean, I, I, I think that the declining readership numbers and the uh, uh, declining revenue starts making those editorial pressures themselves. I mean, I, I, I think that what you've got now is a news media that are focused on feelings. And if you've got a feeling... You all can almost trump any argument in New Zealand, and 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 I think that the problem with just making decisions and journalistic uh, uh, calls on feelings is that it's very shallow, and it has a limited shelf life, and the market will make its decisions. I mean, I I, I think that you're seeing, particularly with some of the the big mainstream uh, brands out there, the hemorrhaging readership yeah. numbers. Um, if you cannot find, and this is always the problem with identity politics, right? Yeah. If that you start, if you start selling all men are terrible and all heteronormative whites as males are rapists and they're all racist and they're all, if that's your starting point, and there's no wiggle room on that, if that's your start, then how do you actually build solidarity? Yeah. If it's all about identity, where is your solidarity? And if solidarity has common themes, like. We all want to have a good public health system. We all want to have a good public um, education system. We want services so that when we turn up, we can get them and we can get looked up. But those sorts of things are the universals. Constantly bringing up identity as a source of disruption and as a focus. Or calling people bullies. Um, or, yeah. 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 Um, and so, so I think there's a natural shelf life to it. Yeah. Bomber, the other thing I raised, of course, with, uh, with Bryce and, and, and with Chris Trotter earlier... This has been so smooth, so bloody seamless. I cannot now help but think there were talks before Christmas. This was basically a plan that Robertson, Adern, and Hipkins cooked up. 
Um, look, I've, I've, I, I was, I, you know, I, I, I talked to a lot of people in the cabinet, a lot of people in the caucus. I was having discussions with a lot of them over the holidays. Uh, there had been before December, uh, 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 you know, the, the rumor, not the rumor, but the, 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 the talk was that the prime minister was looking at if considering her future. Now everybody took that to mean she was maybe thinking of standing down after the next election. That and and and, and that's been the public perspective yeah, yeah. and I, and and put forward. When she came out with the absolute, no, I'm leaving. I was just over it. I'm bugged, love. I'm yeah. Um, I, I the, the the shock that occurred behind the scenes was very realistic. I mean, I I, I, I I think that I don't I don't think there was a prior knowledge. I think it really happened very quickly. It was a shock. Um and and I I mean seamless I, 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 I think what they understand is that national and act are a juggernaut. And if there is if any chance of beating that juggernaut, they have to have absolute loyalty to whoever's going in. Uh, I think you'll see them being the most loyal they've been uh, into this election because they know what the consequences are. Yeah, well, I think it's coming for them, uh, w whatever they do. And, and I guess the question we're, we're now asking is, will the real Labour Party please stand up? Is it the woke guys who've been in control? Or is it Chris Hipkins? Is it the boy from the hut? And the Pacifica chick I, from I, West Auckland? I think it's going. This 2023 is going to um, be decided by the economics. I think that the recession that we're looking, the geopolitical shockwaves coming, are going to make this a very steep recession. It's going to feel like a crisis very quickly. You have 50% of New Zealanders coming off uh, mortgages of 3.5 to maybe seven this year. That's a $400 a week increase in the cost of living that many families just don't have the capacity to pay. People are going to feel like it's a crisis. Uh, it's going to come down to who do you fear more, a National Act government or a Labour Green Māori Party government? Because let's be clear, the only way numerically Labour beats National and Act right now is a grey, Green plus Māori Party coalition. That's the only way. Yeah, well, I'd like to see them get that formed. On the new change of direction well, on Maori policy. Well, you know, I mean, I think that uh, the relationship between Willie Jackson and John Tamahiri will be the most important decider of that. Yeah. All right. I thank you very much indeed for your time, Bomber. Who knows? You might get invited back to some parties, some Labour Party parties. Excellent. About time. About time. Yeah. All right, mate. Cheers. That is Martin Bomber Bradbury with his take and a particular critique of the new or the Prime, Deputy Prime Minister designate uh, Carmel Cipollone, who we must also invite uh, invite on the on the program. If you're listening, Ben lying and having the day off at home because I'm such a wonderful and beneficent boss, aren't I?